a key aspect of our Samuelson uh, framework here is that um, what the government does is um, valued by households um, so that in the utility function of households uh, you know the so goods and services that are produced by the government, so the goods and services that are produced by uh, public workers is going to be valuable. In the same way that the goods and services that are produced by private workers, workers that are employed by households uh, directly, is going to be um, valuable. And you know, you have a trade-off between, uh, between these two types of goods and services and they'll both be valued. And so the, you know, the, the government you know, here it's not a case where what the government is totally uh, valueless and it's just like digging holes, for instance, or just showing goods in the water, like uh, people in micro sometimes uh, sometimes assume. So um, here what we have, uh, so let's formalize a bit this. Let's look at the type of utility function that we're considering. So, um, so here, you know, we can just think about a representative uh, think about the representative households we we'll look at the utility of the representative household and of course this utility will directly um, you know it's the same as uh, basically being a welfare it's going to be the function that gives us social welfare in the economy because uh, we are looking at a representative uh, representative agent economy in which the utility of the household is just the same as social welfare um, so Uh, right, so we have a representative household. And uh, their utility, so uh, I'm going to derive uh, utility from um, public and private um, goods and services. So that's a key aspect of this um, Samuelsonian analysis. So to be more precise, so we'll have a utility function So the utility function will take the form u of um, c and g. So c, you know, in, in practice, c should be consumption of private goods and um, uh, private goods and, and uh, services. Um, but of course, all these goods and services are produced by private. Uh, workers who are not recruiters, who are productive. Um, and so here, you know, just to simplify, we'll think about everything in terms of labor. So instead of translating labor into goods and services and then having that enters the utility function um, through some kind of production, we can just assume directly that the utility is derived from the number of um, workers who are, uh, who are productive. You know, it's completely fine. And then the production process can be lumped into the, can be lumped into the utility function. So the C that we have here, this is, um, you know, this is just the share of productive um, private workers. So basically here the utility function, you know, lumps preferences of our private goods and services as well as how this number of workers the productivity of the of the workers, uh, you know, that's not too relevant. So the so number of workers is going to directly uh, here uh, determine utility, and then so these private workers show up in the utility function, and then the second argument in the utility function is the share of productive um, public workers. So something in practice, you know, you could have uh, the productive public workers and you could make them go through some production function to determine how many goods and services they are going to provide. And then you can go put that into the utility function. Um, but, you know, these things are not separately 
are really measured. Um, and so we might as well just assume that directly it's um, the, the number of workers and the good and, and you know the services that they embody that's going to determine the utility function. Okay, so households have utility both over private workers that they directly employ and the public workers that the government employs and that provide public goods and services. Uh, what are the assumptions of our utility function? So stand, we are going to have standard assumption. Uh, U uh, is uh, strictly, of course, increasing in C. So the more private workers you have, the more you know, goods and services that produce, the more utility you have. U, of course, is going to be uh, strictly increasing in G, because you know, the more public goods and services are provided, the better for the households. U, in addition, and that's to have a well-behaved optimization problem, is going to be strictly concave. That's so that, uh, so that our uh, optimization problem is well-behaved. Um, so, you know, these are like standard assumptions and this is, uh, we're going to make them here. So a key object that's going to feature in our optimization um, is in fact the marginal rate of substitution between um, public and private consumption. So here, CNG, uh, you know, it's not even the, it's, you know, the share of um, private workers, the share of public workers who are productive. Um, and of course, it directly determines consumption of private goods and services, consumption of public goods and services. Um, and so key object is going to be the marginal rate of substitution between these two things. That's going to show up. Uh, you will see it's going to show up very quickly when we do the welfare analysis. Um, so we have to introduce, that's going to be key, the marginal um, rate of substitution between um, public and private. Um, so we can just say between public and private goods. Goods, of course, is um, goods and services, and that's directly determined by the number of public and, and the number of private workers. Uh, so that's going to be a key object, the marginal rate of substitution between public and private goods. So it's, it's going to tell us um, basically how the household values public and private goods in terms of, uh, in, you know, basically in terms of uh, how they value public goods in terms of private goods. So um, we denote this marginal rate of substitution as a standard by MRS. So it's between public and private uh, goods. So we note it GC, we substitute GNC, who says that it's between G and C. And this marginal rate of substitution, it's defined as DU, DG. So the, oops, sorry, this should be a big U here. So it's a marginal, um, utility derived from, um, you know, from private goods, DU, DG. So that's a marginal utility. Uh, so it's, you know, utils, but we want to measure it relative to the marginal utility from, uh, from private goods. So we want to know how value, how valuable an extra public good is relative to how valuable an extra private good is. So here's a unit where we know we're normalizing this, this marginal utility. So the unit of measurement is um, the value of one private good. And so we are measuring, think of it as measuring the public good relative to the private good. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be a relative measure so that the MRS doesn't have units actually. So it's DU, DG divided by uh, DU, this is so. Um, so here it's a marginal rate of, you know, it's like marginal rate of substitution between um, consumption and leisure. You're trying to measure everything in unit of consumption. So here it's a little bit the same. We're trying to measure the value of public goods in units of um, the value of the private goods. So it's as if we were normalizing everything by the value 
of, uh, of a private good. So it's uh, DUDG divided by DUDC. Of course, both marginal utility are positive, so the marginal rate of substitution um, is positive. That's going to be an important object when we do the welfare analysis. Uh, what are the assumptions we make on our marginal rate of substitution? So we'll make standard assumptions. So we know it's positive, but in addition, we're going to assume that uh, MRS of GC is um, strictly decreasing in G over C, so that when, as you tend to have more public and private goods relative, when you tend to have more uh, public good relative to private good, the value of your public good relative to that of a private good is going to decrease. Um, so MRSGC is strictly decreasing in uh, GC, uh, which is, you know, that's satisfied for standard function. And furthermore, and that's going to be important to have an interior solution, we'll assume that the MRSGC at um, at zero, so when g over c is equal to zero, is strictly greater than one. So that when there are no public goods at all, um, the public good is more valuable than the private good. So that you always want to provide some public good. If this wasn't true, you would never want to provide any public good because even without any public good, there would be less valuable than private goods, and you shut down the government. Um, but so this is required. Uh, this is so that it is uh, desirable you know, from a welfare perspective to uh, provide some public goods. And therefore, you know, mathematically, so that we can get an interior solution to the planner's problem. Because otherwise, you know, it wouldn't be interior. You would just want to have zero public good. So this is, you know, it's going to be, a, you know, that's going to be a useful assumption here. And the fact that the marginal rate of substitution is decreasing is just telling you, like, as you tilt your consumption basket towards more public good, their value is decreasing. And again, this is to have a well-behaved problem. Um, 